But let's talk about yeah. Africa, though. Africa is a continent of 54 countries. And um, of course, Africa also houses perhaps the largest um, poverty population in the world. Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world, as you may know. So <laughs> do you think the poverty we are experiencing, experiencing in Africa is a consequence of failed economic system? And if so, which economic system do you think Africa should adopt? Should Africa adopt a more socialist system or a more capitalistic system or something of a mix of both? Okay. Now, I will say this. Um, the, the poverty in Africa is not because of uh, capitalism or socialism or communism or the system, as you say. It's, it's because of the leadership. And the leadership has not yet put in place institutions you know, which can, which can, you know, require any system, any of this system, either capitalist or socialist or communist to operate well. The leadership has not yet put in place those kind of systems. So um, I think basically it's the leadership. Now, I, I want to make, I, I just want to sound this distinction so we have a, a clear understanding between what we call capitalism and socialism and communism. Capitalism simply means a uh, an economy where resources and means of production are simply run by private individuals. And socialism, it's uh, uh, an economic system where, you know, they consider that resources and means of production are run by, you know, the community, uh, the people, you know, through their government. And communism, on the other hand, is where the government has total charge over resources and means of production. Yes, yeah, so that's it. Now, I want to say this. The different thing is we should not we, we should not base our economies or our successes on labels, okay? Uh, to, to say an economy is going to succeed when it's socialist or a communist or capitalist, I think it's it's the wrong thing to do because I've seen communist economies do well, I've seen capitalist economies do well, I've seen socialist economies do well. And if Africa has to succeed, if nations have to succeed in Africa, you look at the realities of your people. You look at what they are facing. You look at you look at you know the income level of your people, and you know what system to put in place and the institutions to back those systems up. That is what is going to make it succeed. So capitalism can succeed in Africa, yes. Socialism can succeed in Africa, yes. And communism, dare I say, yeah, it can succeed in Africa if there are the right systems in place. I'll take an example from a nation like China. China mm -hmm. system is. Uh, should I say capitalist? No, no, not capitalist, socialist or communist. That's what the West describes. But China is a sec the world's second largest economy. In quotes, again, you know, even if they are the first, there's going to be a manipulation to make sure the information is not out. <laughs> you know, just make sure the US is always in front, and, you know, for the, for the game of capitalism and all that. But you see, they are the second largest economy in the world. And within, within the last 10 years, China removed 400 million people out of poverty. That's a system that's been uh, that's been criticized generally in the world. That I could see that. Now, if you look at the United States, that's the world's largest economy. That's capitalist, and you see they are succeeding because they have the, inst the right institutions to back it up. China is succeeding because they have the right institutions to back it up. A nation like um, should I say a nation like India? Look at a nation like India. India is is mainly mixed, and you see that there's a high level of poverty in India and you know, there's, there's a level of, you know, uh, where people are really doing well in India, you know, and their system is highly socialist. So I think um, systems succeed based on the institutions they put in place to back them up and not necessarily the, 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 the systems themselves, the institutions they put in place to back them up based on the realities of the people. So you said two things. You said, first of all, we need to fix the problem of leadership in Africa and also we don't need a one size fits all approach to these things. Each country should understand its uh, uniqueness and develop something that yes. caters to that. And from there, it doesn't matter if it is if it is socialist or capitalist, as long as it's um it's it works. It works at least based on the unique attributes of the people of that country, you know, it's gonna work. Now, but let me play the devil's advocate though. Some people will tell you that based on um based on numbers, right, capitalism is still the best system of government. Now you made reference to China, China being a communist system, and yet China 
is the second largest economy in the world. They would argue with you that under Mao, under Chairman Mao, China was nothing to write home about. It was when China began to adopt a more capitalistic approach, you know, China began to make waves. You know, of course, I would agree with you that uh, based on Chinese, on the Chinese system, everything is regulated in China. Everything is regulated in China. But even so, if China were truly a communist system, China would not be producing the likes of uh, Jack Ma, the owner of Ali, Alibaba, AliExpress. You know, there are lots and lots of billionaires in China. There are lots and lots of unicorns in China. So if China were truly a communist system in the classical sense of the world, then we wouldn't have all these things. It was when they began to take a more capitalistic approach, they began to develop the economy, lift people out of poverty, and what of you. But I would, I would give it to you that China is heavily regulated, heavily. I mean, look at what they did, did to Jack Ma. Jack Ma, we don't even know what's, what's up with Jack Ma today. You know, so the Chinese system is that crazy. I mean, that's what the debate on TikTok is, is all about. There are fears that TikTok, being a Chinese company, has to answer to the Chinese government if the Chinese government asks for anything. You know, so those are real concerns I, I, would, I would give you. But, but then, based on numbers, based on history, based on what we can see today, they would argue with you that capitalism is still the most preferred system of government for any country to adopt. What do you say to that? Okay. Now, I just, I just want to make this point clear. 